Welcome to our lecture online. Another benefit of the dot product or the scalar product is that it allows us to find the angle between any two vectors if that angle is not known. The reason for that is because there's two different ways or two different methods by which you can do the dot product. So let's take a look at that. We can say that the dot product a dot b, let me write over here, so we have a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. And on the previous video, we also saw that a dot b can be found by multiplying the x components together and by multiplying the y components together. Now again, we have to be careful here when we do that, that if the components point in the negative direction, that we do add a negative value to that particular equation. But now notice that since a dot b is equal to this, and a dot b is equal to this, we can actually set those equal to one another. We can say that a times b, the magnitude of a, times the magnitude of b, times the cosine of the angle between them, is equal to a sub x, b sub x, plus a sub y, b sub y. And then if we divide both sides by the magnitude, a times b, we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to ax, bx, plus a y b y all divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b and finally when we take the inverse cosine of both sides we can say that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of a sub x b sub x times a sub y or plus a sub y b sub y all divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b and this now becomes our method of finding the angle between any two vectors if, of course, the magnitudes of the x and y components of each vector are known. And from that, we can also, of course, find the magnitudes if those are not known initially. All right, let's go ahead and apply that to our example that we used on the last video. We can say that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of a sub x. Notice that's it's pointing in the negative direction, the x component of a, so we put a minus 1.5 times, uh, that would be b sub x, and b sub x would be positive 6, plus a sub y, which is a positive 2.6, and b sub y, which is a 0, because it has no components pointing in the y direction, divided by the magnitude of a, which is 3, and the magnitude of b, which is 6. So theta becomes the inverse cosine of, that would be a minus 9 over 18, so that would be theta is equal to the inverse cosine of minus 1 half, and let's see here, what angle gives you cosine of negative 1 half? An angle of 120 degrees, so theta equals 120 degrees, which of course we already knew that if we had seen the previous video, but at least now you can see that even if you don't know what the angle is, it's relatively easy to find the angle using the dot product mechanism. Now notice, simply the equation becomes that the angle theta is equal to the inverse cosine of the one method to find the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors. And that's how it's done.